Hey everyone, it's Mark here. In this video, I'm going to cover a recent Tesla and Bitcoin development. And in particular, I'm going to cover the development that you can now buy a Tesla with Bitcoin, which Elon Musk has recently announced. I'm going to go over whether this is good news for Tesla or not. I'm going to go over whether it's good news for consumers or not, and whether it's worthwhile considering buying a Tesla with Bitcoin. And I'm generally going to talk about what this might mean for the Bitcoin market going forward. Now, I have a background in finance, I have a PhD in finance, and I'll also cover various pieces of information about Bitcoin, including the thoughts of various illustrious investors, such as Warren Buffett, Michael Burry, and the like. So I know a fair bit about this area. But if you think I've missed anything, it would be interesting to hear about that in the comments below, of course. All right. So our recent development here is that Tesla has indicated it will accept Bitcoin as a method of payment. And this was enunciated in a recent tweet from Elon Musk. He's elaborated a little bit upon this. So for example, he's mentioned that when you buy a Tesla with Bitcoin, Tesla is going to keep the Bitcoin on their balance sheet as Bitcoin rather than converting it into the United States dollars. To some extent, this means that they are taking on a lot of translation exposure, but avoiding some economic transaction exposure and currency conversion exposure. So in essence, what they're doing is they're keeping Bitcoin in the balance sheet and they will have to rebase this Bitcoin into United States dollars for their investors, but they're not actually going through the conversion process. Now, I'll get to that a little bit later on after we talk about the transaction process. So that, in essence, is what Elon Musk has asserted. So we can start look at the Tesla website. So if we go to the Tesla website, we can develop and design our own Tesla tree. So for example, say we go to the Tesla homepage, and we decide we want to develop our own Tesla 3 to purchase. So we'll go, uh, go through the motions here. We'll then click to order our Model 3. So once we've ordered our Model 3 or click to order, we'll start being able to configure it. Now, I'll ignore most of the options on the configurator because I really just want to look at the purchase aspect of it. So let's just scroll down and we'll go through to the ordering, continue to payment. So after I've continued to payment, I have various options. I can pay with cash, a lease, or a loan. Or alternatively, if I come down here, I can pay with Bitcoin. When I click to pay with Bitcoin, I have to enter my account details, and then presumably Tesla will contact me at some point in time, presumably not instantaneously. And I will also need to place a deposit uh, of 100 US dollars, which they form as an equivalent in Bitcoin. Now, this is not an exact number, it is an estimate. It does not necessarily reflect the current Bitcoin price. Then I would place the order. And that, in essence, is ordering a Tesla with Bitcoin. They've tried to make it reasonably seamless. However, there are some issues that make it not totally seamless. The first one, as I've indicated, is you need to fill in your details to make this order. The second one comes in the form of Tesla's FAQ and information in relation to ordering a Tesla. So when you go through trying to order a Tesla, you can design your Tesla here, but there are some issues. So we need to look at the terms and conditions for Bitcoin. So if we click on our terms and conditions, you'll see there's a rather lengthy document here. I won't go through all of this, but a good portion of the relevant bits are in their support document. If we click through to their support document, what you'll see here is you'll get a website. And on this website, you can come down here and you'll see various pieces of information. The one that I'm particularly interested in is how long it takes to process the Bitcoin payment. Here they're asserting it will take six hours to process a Bitcoin payment. So it could take you quite a while to get this transaction off the ground. You have to effectively order it, and then you need to make your payment once you've gone through that process. The payment itself takes six hours to process. So it can be a little bit laborious. That time frame is important because it can influence the cost of your Tesla. So that, in essence, is what one would do. Now let's have a look at some advantages and disadvantages. Say you're looking at buying your Tesla. You're looking at buying your brand new Model 3 or whatever it is. And you decide, do I want to order with Bitcoin or not? Let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is it's a way for you to use your Bitcoin. Because previously, you might have just had to convert it back into US dollars. Or if you didn't want to do that, you'd have to leave it as Bitcoin with very few things you can spend it on, keep it as a speculative asset. Basically, it gives you a thing to do with your Bitcoin. The disadvantages are the way in which this transaction might occur. So let's have a look at some of those. Firstly, it takes quite a while for this to process. So six hours for your payment to process. 
And that's just at the minimum after they've taken your order. So foreseeably, there could be a day between when you want to place your order and when the order is actually processed. Now, in hard currency terms, like in US dollars, that generally doesn't matter. Because if you're in the United States, you're earning in United States dollars, you're spending largely in US dollars, that US dollar is, is not going to matter that much if you're waiting a day or not. But with Bitcoin, it can. Now, to see this, let's go over to the Bitcoin price here. What you'll notice here, and I have the Google Bitcoin prices here. Now, admittedly, these are going to be with a little bit of a lag. But what you'll notice here is throughout the course of the past few hours, it's fluctuated going up to the high 56,000s. But just a little bit of time ago, it was down at 53,900. And that's just recently. It's fluctuated like $3,000. Now, admittedly, the uptick in Bitcoin would actually help you if you're buying a Tesla, i.e., your Bitcoin is now worth more. So if you could delay the purchase, you would now have more spending power. But if we just go a little bit longer in the time horizon, it doesn't take us long to find a situation where it was 57,000 and then it goes down to 54,000 quite quickly. And we've seen a lot of these fluctuations. What this tells us is there's quite a fair amount of risk in having to wait six hours to a day to get your transaction done. This can dramatically alter the value of your Bitcoin and then potentially dramatically alter the US dollar equivalent value of your transaction. So there are some issues here depending on how they lock in the price. So it could be that it's beneficial to you or it could be that it's not beneficial to you based on how many US dollars each Bitcoin is worth at each individual point in time and how that time lag works for you in terms of preserving currency. So that is something that one needs to bear in mind. The next thing one needs to bear in mind is what exactly Tesla intends to do with the exchange rate they offer you. So they have a base US dollar price for their Teslas, but they obviously need to convert that US dollar price into Bitcoin. Now they'll do that at some measure representing the prevailing market price, but they're probably not going to give you the midpoint of the bid ask spread. Because in any of these things, there's a bid ask spread and you have a low price and a high price, they're probably going to give you the lower price, which is worse for you. That means you might not necessarily see this 56,827. You might see a bit below that. You might see 56,300 or whatever it is that Tesla offers you. So in essence, you might not actually end up with the best price in the world, and you might get kind of killed on the bid-ask spread. Tesla presumably is going to want to make some money from this bid-ask spread, so that is an issue you're going to need to bear in mind, in addition to the aforementioned volatility that I mentioned just now. The next issue you need to bear in mind if you intend to consider buying with Bitcoin is say you are a Bitcoin bull. You've observed what has happened to Bitcoin over the past year, from $10,000 up to $60,000 at its height. Say you're a Bitcoin bull and you think it's really going to be worth $100,000 in some point in time in the future, maybe a year's time. If you really believe that, why would you spend your Bitcoin now? Why would you get rid of your Bitcoin now when it's $56,000? If you think it's going to be worth $100,000 in the near future, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, clearly, if you're like me and you're a little bit more skeptical about how much Bitcoin is really worth, or if you're like Michael Burry or Warren Buffett and you don't quite buy into it, then in that case, you might want to spend your Bitcoin now before it plummets if you think it will. But if you're a Bitcoin bull and you think it's going to keep surging, then you'd be better off holding if you really think that's what's going to happen. So it does create another issue there for people who really believe in Bitcoin. If you really believe in Bitcoin and you think it's going to keep surging, why would you spend it now is basically the issue. So you've got a few concerns if you're really going to be looking at spending your Bitcoin on a Tesla. We also have some concerns from Tesla's perspective. So if we go back to Tesla right here, Elon Musk's tweets, Elon Musk has said that Bitcoin paid to Tesla will be retained as Bitcoin. So this gives rise to what's called translation exposure or translation risk. So when you've got a multinational corporation, say it's a US corporation, it owns something in Australia. If that's the case, then it has to convert the value of that Australian subsidiary into US dollars for its financial reporting. So it can report back through to its US investors and then potentially pay out dividends to its US investors. That's a translation risk. You need to translate your Australian dollars into US dollars. 
and the value of those assets will fluctuate based on the exchange rate that prevails. Tesla has implicitly taken this on with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is going to fluctuate. So there's implicitly a translation exposure. This is not an economic or cash flow exposure because it does not directly have a direct cash flow ramification, but it is an exposure that's going to feed into Tesla's balance sheet, which can create on flow issues. And it can be less than desirable for Tesla shareholders. Furthermore, if Tesla shareholders do want dividends to be paid out, those dividends are more than likely going to have to be paid as US dollars. Tesla will then need to grapple with the idea of what does it do with its Bitcoin receipts? Does it just carve those out of the available cash flow for dividends? But then if it does that, will it have enough cash flow to pay for its other stuff? Because not all suppliers are going to want to be paid with Bitcoin. So Tesla is going to have an issue in terms of paying its investors. Furthermore, if Tesla is really keeping a lot of its money in Bitcoin, not all of the suppliers are ready, willing, and able to accept Bitcoin as a method of payment. So for those suppliers, this might not be adequate as a method of payment either. So Tesla itself is going to face some issues. Some of those risks are purely in terms of translating accounts for balance sheet items. Other aspects of those risks have more fundamental economic concerns. And those are things Tesla will need to grapple with. Now, what we've seen is upon Tesla's announcement, Bitcoin has surged. So if we zoom into the most recent date, Bitcoin really went up recently, went up a couple of thousand dollars. That tells us that Bitcoin's use by Tesla is a huge positive for Bitcoin. If we think about one of the critiques that Mark Cuban had about Bitcoin, it was that Bitcoin does not have an easy way of being translated and used as a way to pay for things. And he also mentioned that Bitcoin is often not easy to use. And, there, and that is a barrier, particularly to older, older investors or older purchasers using Bitcoin. But Tesla is making it a bit easier. So that does remove one of the concerns that people had about Bitcoin. It removes one of the concerns that Bitcoin might have no real use. Of course, evidently, at least some companies are accepting Bitcoin as a method of payment. It remains to be seen whether other companies accept it, but Tesla is at the moment. This might be an experiment that might fall flat, but still it is say, showing that Bitcoin might be used, which partly addresses one of the critiques that some investors have had. It doesn't address all of the critiques. So for example, Michael Burry's critique that it's just a speculative bubble driven up by leverage, it doesn't really have anything to say about that. It doesn't have anything to say about the fact that it might not have any intrinsic value as Warren Buffett has mentioned. And Warren Buffett has been careful to indicate that blockchain and blockchain technology is completely separable from Bitcoin. And indeed, one company I've invested in called Egg Unity uses blockchain technology in agricultural technology. It is completely divorced from Bitcoin in any way. So as a result, blockchain is not the same as Bitcoin and the two pieces of technology are separable. Warren Buffett's critique then is that Bitcoin as an individual thing doesn't have value. It has no more value than the paper on which you write a check. The paper doesn't mean anything. Rather, it's the claim that that paper gives you, much like with Bitcoin is part of his critique here, and the fact that it has no underlying intrinsic value. Nevertheless, Tesla's moves here do something to address some of the concerns people have had about Bitcoin. Okay, so that's a short summary of what's happened with Tesla. Tesla's decided to accept Bitcoin as a method of payment. Elon Musk has tweeted about this. This has gotten rather a lot of traction here. 100,000 or 110,000 likes on one of these tweets at the moment, 422,000 likes on another one of the tweets. This is getting quite a lot of traction, and it's obviously seen as good news by rather a large number of people. But if you have any thoughts about this, it would be interesting to hear about those in the comments below. And if you think I've missed anything, let me know in the comments as well. Otherwise, it would be brilliant if you liked the video, and if you were to subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you for future videos as well. Bye.